Let's go to Travis in Pomona. Welcome to Bob Moore Live. Yeah, so my question is, when the room was come of adultery and the people challenged uh, Jesus to uh, stone her, yes. would it have been against Roman law because uh, they had lost the, the right for capital punishment? Well, you get two things going. Number one, the passage is not part of the original text of Scripture. For this reason, any modern translation will put it in brackets or they'll reduce it to a footnote and they will explain how that this was inserted around the third century by an overzealous monk. Oh. So that it is, it's the same thing with um, a couple other passages uh, that are notorious. First John 5, 7, 3, that bear witness in heaven. Uh, when Erasmus was doing his Greek New Testament, he happened to notice there wasn't a single Greek manuscript he knew of that had it. Mm-hmm. And the Pope said, does it matter? I want it in it. So, uh, number one, it's, uh, it's not germane in one sense. Number two, no. Each nation under Roman rule was allowed certain leeways when it came to such kinds of punishment. Now, when it came to trying someone for treason, which was the reason for Jesus being hauled before Herod and Pilate, in order for someone to be crucified and put to death by the government, one would have to begin by an appeal to the government saying this one wanted a revolution. The woman caught in adultery, this was a a domestic matter, and the Romans didn't care if you killed her or not. So don't get confused. A political trial for a political death versus a domestic issue. Let's say blasphemy or something of that nature. Uh, The Romans gave the Persians, the Egyptians. um, I have done a lot of study of Roman law. And uh, one of the reasons the Roman Empire worked was they gave a huge amount of latitude for native religions and, and native domestic laws. Okay? Oh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Travis. Now we go to North Hills to Dana. Welcome to Bob Murray Live. Hi, Dr. Bob. How are you? Fine. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Um, Just a simple question, really. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to know, how does uh, predestination tie... Well, actually, what is... The question is, do we have a free will, and how does predestination tie into that? Have you ever seen the movie Peter Pan? Yes. Now, if you go up on your roof and you say, I will fly, and you choose to fly and you jump off, what's going to happen? You're going to fall. You're going to fall. You see, when people say free will, I say free from what to what. Uh huh. See, as a philosopher, I know that no question comes cheap. Mm-hmm. Free from what? To what? Now, if someone says, well, uh, are we free from determinism? Uh, B.F. Skinner, who taught uh, behavioral uh, sciences and psychology, said basically, your upbringing and your environment predetermine everything you think, do, and say. So you are like a robot. You right. will do only what you have been programmed to do. The Bible says, no, God created man over the world. Uh We are to take dominion of it. It cannot take dominion of us. Uh Um, If you say, well, are you free from the control of other people? Uh Well, of course, there are people been in prison for their faith. And no matter what cruel things were done, they still maintained. And they died as a martyr. Now, are we free from death? Can you choose to be free from death? Uh, a cult called the Breatharians, said, we don't believe in death. Mm. Guess what happened to them? They died. They all died. (laughs) So, you see, are you free from your own sinful nature? Uh, No. No, no, you see, you can't. So by the time you whittle this down, what are you free from? And then what are you free to? What are you free to? Mm -hmm. Are you free to be sinless? One guy said, oh, yes. I said, okay. I looked at my watch. Start. <laughs> and he said, I've been sinless for two years. Mm-hmm. I said, what's the, what's the telephone number of your wife? Yeah. He said, oh, why? I said, if you've been sinless, she'll know it. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What wife would ever say her husband was settled? See, free from what to what? Mm-hmm. By the time you're finished, you'll know why the Bible never uses the phrase. Mm. Never. Mm-hmm. It says we are sinners in need of the Son of God to set us free. Mm-hmm. You who were slaves of sin have now been set free, mm-hmm. and whom the Son sets free shall be free of thee. The freedom described in the Bible is moral, not metaphysical. Mm-hmm. Greek philosophy, when it spoke of free will, was metaphysical and not moral. Mm-hmm. That's the difference between the Hebrew world and life view and the Greco-Roman pagan world and life view. Mm. See, the pagan said, well, we're free from the gods. We're free from to be whatever we want to be. We can be God. Mm-hmm. See, the, the scriptures come along and says, you can't, you're not free to be whatever you want to be. God created you, a finite creature, and that's it, hon. You're never going to be a deity. Mm-hmm. You're never going to be a tree stump. You can't be a horse, an ostrich. You can't be a star. You can sing about it, but you ain't going to be it. So by the time you're finished, you say, well, well the Bible really doesn't even deal with these philosophic things. Mm-hmm. What it says is this. Your actions are determined by what you are. A mm-hmm. good person, humanly, you know, humanly speaking, does good things. Yeah. Um, I would not take a child molester into my home and let the child molester be around my children. Mm-hmm. Knowing the nature of this person, would it not be wrong to tempt him with children? Mm-hmm. See the difference. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's why what you see is what you get. Um, now, I think you called once before. Did I send you that tape on free will and divine sovereignty? <laughs> that is an atonement. Oh, no. The tape is what you need. Oh. oh well, you hang on and I'm going to send you a tape and it discusses this and it will help you to walk your way through the tulips. Okay. And what it is is that free will, as Dr. Schaefer said, has become a slogan that is meaningless. Mm-hmm. People wave it like a flag. Yeah. Rally around the flag, boys, round. And you stop them. He says, well, I see the flag. What does it mean? Oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But we're for it. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the age of nimnuism in which we lived. Hang on. We'll send you that tape. one 800 truth Let's go to Bellflower to Richard. Richard, welcome to Bob Morey Live. Hi, Dr. Bob. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Dr. Bob, I have a question on, uh, you know, how we've been going over, uh, you know, on, on Monday night's class. Okay, you come out to the Francis Schaefer series. Then. Right. And uh, I was talking to a friend, and what I would like to know is, what are the advantages of our form of government versus the forms of government, like, for example, China or Europe or, or maybe, a, I don't know, a Middle East uh, country or... Well, very simple. Your your touchstones are these. One, that form of government which gives the greatest personal freedom without anarchy. Personal freedom without anarchy. Now, that means you're free to move around. Uh, You can move to Georgia. You can go get something, and it's perfectly fine. Personal freedom without anarchy which means not personal freedom to kill people and destroy property. Secondly, that form of government that supports the free market system and the market uh, side supply, that is capitalism, that form of government which encourages people to strive for excellence because they will be rewarded. So when the United States originally said, you can come to this country, and if you work hard, you can become a millionaire. You can can succeed. It doesn't matter your race, your creed, your religion, your gender. It doesn't matter. You come to America. It's the land of opportunity. And we believe in equal opportunity for all. Not equal equal success. Some people are lazy bums. So that form of government that rewards hard work by giving equal opportunity to success is the greatest form of government. And then I would suggest uh, that you get a hold of the book by Henry Meter, 
M E E T E R, basic concepts of Calvinism, where which is a misnomer. What he's talking about is political science, political theory, the views of the state. 